I make this thing in today's video is just a setup for solar panels in space. It's intended to demonstrate the principles that you need to understand. It's definitely not intended to be the ultimate solar panel design ever. It generates 2400 watts minus whatever power it misses because meteor showers happen to be happening. Let's get started. Building anything in space and oxygen not included can be very challenging, largely because meteor showers happen. And when they do, meteors fall from the sky and destroy all of the stuff that you build. The way to protect yourself from that is with bunker doors. You can build a row of bunker doors in space to protect all of the things that you build in space from meteors during meteor showers. And when there aren't meteor showers, you can use automation to open the bunker doors and let light through for solar panels or rockets through to explore space. I recommend building your row of bunker doors close to the top of the map. This leaves a lot of space beneath them for solar panels and rockets and what other setups you have in mind. meteors will come from the sky, hit the bunker doors, and be stopped. And they'll leave behind regolith, which is kind of like sand. It's very hot. It's about 300 degrees. So you can't let the regolith touch anything that can't get hot. The regolith will make them overheat and be destroyed. Also, regolith blocks the light from getting to your solar panels. So you can't just let it sit there. You have to mine it out somehow. When the bunker doors open, the regolith falls through. So I'm going to start out by making some mesh tiles to catch the regolith. Notice that mesh tiles are transparent to light, so so they don't get in the way of the light if you're making solar panels. Notice that I put the mesh tiles at an angle so that I can use robo miners to clean the regolith off the top of them. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to put a platform down here to hold robo miners. If I put a robo miner right there, then you can see that it can reach the spaces above each of these mesh tiles and clean off any regolith that's sitting on top of those tiles. And if I put a robo miner over here, right there, then it can reach the spaces above each of these mesh tiles and clean off the regolith. I can extend that concept with even more mesh tiles. You can repeat this pattern as far as you like to the right and the left to cover as much of the sky as you prefer. That will definitely be a wide enough area to demonstrate this solar panel setup. Let's talk about how to deal with heat in space. In oxygen not included, a vacuum is a perfect insulator. If something like a RoboMiner gets hot, it stays hot. When the RoboMiner does its job, it generates some amount of heat. It's not very much, but it heats up and heats up until eventually it gets destroyed by its own heat, even if that takes several cycles. In order to have RoboMiners and really anything else that generates heat in space, we have to have some way to cool it off. I'm pretty sure the only way to cool off any building is to let it touch a gas or a liquid in the environment. I'm going to keep these robo miners cool by putting a little bit of water on top of these airflow tiles. That means I need airflow tiles on the ends of these platforms to keep the water from running off the end. And also I need to put drywall behind the platform so that the water doesn't uh, escape into space. I need to keep that water cool as well, otherwise eventually the water itself will overheat. For this we can just use a pipe. I have a couple of pipes over here coming up from elsewhere in my sandbox base. I'm going to use granite pipes and I'll build, I'll build that granite pipe all the way across the platform to keep all of that water cool. The only thing left to do is get the water on the platform. It seems like you could just put water on there once and it would last forever, but it's a little bit messier than that in space. Your dupes, for example, might be carrying a lump of regolith that's 300 degrees, and then maybe it's bedtime, so they just drop it on the ground in the water and go to bed. You need a way to automatically replenish the water when it gets low on these platforms. So I'll use a liquid shutoff and put a liquid vent right above it install a hydro sensor to turn on the liquid shutoff when the amount of water is low. 
I can maintain as much or as little water as I want on the platform. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Notice that when liquids are falling through space, they don't get sucked into the space exposure. So it's okay to have a liquid vent up here, just as long as where it lands is protected from space. This hydro sensor is done, so I'm going to set it up to add water to the platform if there is less than one kilogram. Water isn't 100% transparent to light, so the light that's shining down from space will be partially blocked by the water. This amount of water will only block about one half of 1% of the light. We need some automation to open and close the bunker doors. There is a automation utility exactly for that called the space scanner. In order for the space scanner to work at 100% effectiveness, it needs to have a clear view of the sky and be at least 14 tiles away from other stuff like this RoboMiner and the liquid shutoff. 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 14. All right, I'll just put it near the ladder. To a space scanner, what having a clear view of the sky means is that everything between the space scanner and the sky is transparent. Since we're building this to be transparent for solar panels anyway, it's all transparent enough for the space scanner too. The automation for the space scanner outputs a green wire when a meteor shower is coming, and we want to close the bunker doors, so we need a knot gate. Just connect that knot gate to the bunker doors. connect all of this stuff to power. All right, let's have a look at our new space scanner. Uh, you can see the scan quality is 100%, so I guess we did that part right. And the scan network quality is 17%. If you hover over the scan network quality, it will tell you how much warning you'll have before a meteor shower arrives. Ours says 34 to 200 seconds. So at the minimum, we'll have 34 seconds of notice before meteors show up. Unfortunately, it takes 40 seconds or 45 seconds for the bunker doors to close. So right now, we don't have enough warning before a meteor shower. That means we need another space scanner. The only thing left to do is put in solar panels. The solar panels have to be 14 tiles below the space scanners so that they don't interfere with the space scanners. One, two, three, four. 1314. There and there. There's a really useful thing to know about solar panels. Their maximum power production is 380 watts. Once they have enough light to produce that full 380 watts, any additional light that shines on them is just wasted. You can prevent your solar panels from getting too much light and maxing out their power output by partially hiding them underneath other solar panels. When you do this, you end up with a lot more solar panels processing the same amount of light, but not maxed out. So you optimize the amount of power that you can produce with the limited light you have. A solar panel is seven tiles wide, and if I hide three of them below the adjacent solar panel, then only four of those seven tiles width will be exposed to light coming from the sky. The solar panel won't quite reach its maximum output, which means we're using all of the light coming from the sky as efficiently as possible. You can extend that idea for all of your solar panels by building them in kind of a pyramid shape like this. So there's my solar panels. Um, I'm going to put in some ladders so that my dupes can reach them all. I also need to build some wires. That is this entire setup for solar panels. I will wait for my dupes to finish building that, and then I'll wait for a meteor shower to happen so that we can have a look at all of the functionality going on. The solar panel setup is finished and we've just had a meteor shower, so let's watch carefully as all of this stuff happens. 
Uh, the meteors hit the bunker doors, which were closed, and left a bunch of regolith behind. The bunker doors are opening because the meteor shower is over and the space scanners opened the bunker doors. The regolith will fall through and land on these mesh tiles. There we go. The, the robo miners are eating away the regolith and mining it so that it doesn't block the light from reaching the solar panels. There's water on this platform. It's very hard to see water on top of airflow tiles, but it's definitely there. If I hover my mouse over it, you can see there's a bit over one kilogram per tile. That water cools down the robo miners, and the water moving through this pipe cools down the water so that nothing on this platform can ever overheat. The space scanners are waiting for meteor showers. Our space scanners should be working at 100% quality, and our scan network quality is 65 seconds to 200 seconds before meteor showers arrive. 65 seconds is sufficient time to close the bunker doors, so that's sufficient warning. Our solar panels are all getting light. Here's the light overlay. Those solar panels produced 1,443 kilojoules uh, over the course of the previous cycle there were no meteor showers. That works out to about 2400 watts continuously. While the sun is very intense, it produces a more power than that, and at nighttime when there is no sun, it produces zero. You'll have to set up your power grid with batteries or something like that in order to manage the variable production rates. If you've made it this far through this video, I am very interested in getting your feedback on what you would like to see next. I set up a Patreon, and there's no money involved, but you can go there, and there's a poll that I've posted with a whole bunch of options for other things that I'm kind of interested in working on. So go vote. Go vote for the things that you like. So far, the number of votes for all of the different things I should do next is zero for everything. For all of the options, it's zero. So somebody go vote. Somebody go vote for what you want so that I know what to do next. Do it. That's it. Goodbye.